Okay, in the next couple of sections of the book here, we're going to be talking about linear relationships. And they're called linear relationships because when you draw a graph of the relationship, you end up with a line. And we're going to get to graphing later, but for now, I want to talk about what's happening mathematically to make it into a line. And what's happening mathematically is that you have a constant rate of change between two variables. Um, so let me give you an example of what I mean of a constant rate of change between two variables. So let's say that we have um, one variable, which is we're going to call G, and that is going to be gallons of gas. And that C is going to be the cost of the amount of gas that you buy in total. So what happens when you buy, let's say gas is $3 per gallon. So what happens when you buy one gallon of gas, the cost is $3. When you buy two gallons of gas, the cost is $6. When you buy three gallons of gas, the cost is $9, and so on. And so what makes this linear is that each time you go up one gallon, your cost goes up the same amount, $3. When you go up one gallon here, the cost goes up another $3 over here. So that's what I mean by a constant rate of change. Um, another example is, let's say that you have a bank account and you are saving money. You're putting money in the bank account to save. And let's say that you start out with $100 in this account. You got that for your birthday, so you started your account with $100. And then what you do after that is you put in um, $25 out of every paycheck into the bank account, or $25 a week. So let's let the account A equals the amount in the account. And um, W equal the number of weeks that go by. So what this means, when you first get your bank account, when zero weeks go by, you have um, $100 in your account. When another week goes by, you'll have put in $25 out of your paycheck, and you'll have 125 in your account, and so on. So this also is a linear relationship because each time you go up one week, the amount in your account goes up $25. So what would a nonlinear relationship look like? Well, there's all sorts of examples of that, but here's one just to give you an idea. So recently in the news report, it was reported in the news that the number of coronavirus infections doubled every three days. Um, so if we let um, D equal days and C equal the number of cases, then if I made a chart, it might look something like this. So we have days over here, cases over here. And after at the beginning, let's say we have one case. And it says, since they're telling us it doubles every three days, three days later, we would have two cases. Three days after that, we would have double that number. Three days after that, we would have double that number again, and so on. So let's see if this meets our criteria for linear, um, for a linear relationship. So here we go up a fixed amount of three days, and in that same amount, we go up one case. We go up another three days, and we see here that we go up two cases. Another three days go by, and we go up four cases. And we see that this relationship, um, even though each of these intervals on the left is the same, on the right, the number, the amount that we're increasing is not constant. It changes by a different amount every time it changes. So this is one example of a nonlinear relationship. When you subtract adjacent output values here, the output values are over here, um, and we get different numbers. 
So another thing they're going to talk about in this section is a something called a linear model, a linear model. And they, this is this definition I just copied right out of the book there. You can see it yourself um, next to number five. But what a linear model is, is it's basically an equation that explains the relationship. So, for example, um, they, they, they kind of give you the, the base form of a linear model. Um, if you guys may remember from other math that you've been taken, that they talk about linear models as being in this form, y equals mx plus b. Same thing, we're just using slightly different letters in a couple cases. And in all of these cases, the x value or the t value is the input and the Y or the A or whatever letter you use is the output. So for if, if we look at the, the, the couple of examples that I talked about a couple of minutes ago, for the gas, if we want to make a linear model, well, C is the cost of the gas and um, G is the number of gallons and we notice that we just multiply the number of gallons times three and that gave us the cost so this is a linear model here and you might say well so this three is kind of the m and the g we're using instead of the t but what about the b well b is they they tell us is the initial amount and so the initial amount in terms of the output well if you pump zero gallons of gas, they're not going to charge you any money. They're going to charge you zero dollars. So the initial cost with the gas is zero. So we just don't write it. All right. So let's look at the bank account example. Um, so in that case, it's a little different because the initial amount, um, remember, so, so um, the amount in the bank account was an A, and so the initial amount was $100, because remember we started with $100 before we started putting in our weekly paycheck. And then we put in $25 every week. So this would be a linear model that models that bank account um, scenario. And one other note, this is a plus here, um, sometimes B can be uh, negative, so this could be a minus. Sometimes this M value could also be negative. So these variables include positive or negative numbers. All right, well, this is what they want you to do in number one here in the book. And, without do and they're kind of hoping you can just do this without any math. Um, they're saying, well, there's a phone plan. I don't know if phone plans actually work like this anymore, but it makes for some good math in any case. So one phone plan, you pay a flat $35, then $10 additional per gigabyte. Or if you have the unlimited plan, you just pay $80 a month, regardless of how much you use. And so they're asking you the question, what plan do you think is less expensive? And that question may not be as easy as this one or that one. There may be some conditions and maybes and what ifs in there. So just without doing any math and thinking about it a little bit, um, give an answer to that. So for number two, they want you to fill in this table, which I've um, duplicated out of the book here. Um, and so they're having in this cost column here, they're having you just kind of write out the math that you'd be doing to figure out the cost for G gigabytes for one, two, five, ten, any number of gigabytes. And so um, they just have you kind of write it, it out and then write an equation over here. And they give you they give you examples of what that equation is here, because one times ten plus one times ten is the same as two times 10. So they want you to just kind of condense it into a nice equation. These three dots there, you don't need to worry about these three dots. They're just kind of there to indicate that there's like some space between five and 10. And then what they want you to do down at the bottom is 
make this this last box at the bottom here they want you to make a formula they want to make a formula basically so in all these other ones we're plugging in different numbers like one or two or, or whatever numbers you're talking about but down here they were saying, OK, well, let's make a formula. So instead of plugging in one or two or five or ten or whatever, let's just put a G there so that we have a formula P equals. And then over here is some um, something with G in it that you could plug any number of gigabytes into and calculate the, uh, the cost. So that's what they're looking for in this table. So they also want you to fill in this other table. And remember, there's an unlimited plan. And they want you to do the same thing, except the math is going to be a little different here. And you may feel like this one is so easy that you must be missing something. And I'm going to suggest that maybe you're not missing anything. Um, but you, they want you to make up these two different equations so that we can compare them later. So, and again, down here, we want a formula that we can use for any number of gigabytes. We want to know the cost for any number of gigabytes. So in that box, we want a formula that can calculate that for us. So finally, they want you to, in part B, they want you to fill in a table um, for both plans. So you're going to fill in, maybe use the formula you made or made the or use the amounts that you already calculated. So just fill in the values for these two different plans and based on different numbers of gigabytes. And these tables will be kind of like the ones I made at the beginning with the gas and the bank account. And so um, go ahead and fill that table in and that will take care of problem situation number one.